So if you're trying to write code faster and you think the bottleneck is that your typing speed is just too slow, then there's a good chance there's a few other things that you should be trying instead that will give you a much better return on your investment than just improving your words per minute. All of these are things that I currently use in my workflow as a software engineer, and this has significantly improved my coding velocity compared to back when I was in college. You can let me know down in the comments at the end of this video if there are any other tips that I should have included, but these are four of the things that I do that help me write code a lot faster. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is as much as possible, you want to avoid writing code from scratch. Relying on code that's already been written as part of libraries that you can trust can save you a lot of time. Instead of having to make your own custom sorting algorithms, for example, or your own data structures, it's using something that's already been optimized for efficiency and tested to make sure it hits all of the edge cases. And not only does this save you time on the implementation side, because you're not writing your own algorithms, for example, it also saves you a lot of time on the debugging and testing side. When something's not working, it's a lot nicer to only have to step through the real implementation code of what you're trying to do and not also testing, is there something wrong with this data structure that I made from scratch? Did I mess something up in the sorting algorithm and not consider an edge case? You can kind of skip over all of those things and just assume that they're working. And for any code that you do need to write yourself, if you find that you're frequently copy pasting it and making minor variants of it in different places, then write your own function for it. Not only does this reduce duplication and total lines of code, it also significantly reduces the risk of making errors resulting from copy pasting, an implementation that has a mistake and putting it in nine other places, and then forgetting to make that fix in all nine or 10 of those places. Overall, the less original code you write, the better, but when you do have to write your own code, make it reusable, put it in one place, call into it, make sure you test it to make sure that implementation actually works, and resist the urge to copy paste it and put it in different places because if you make a mistake in one, there's a good chance you're gonna miss fixing it in one of the other places. Now, especially recently, everyone's been talking about using AI tools like ChatGPT to write them whole programs with mixed results, but you can still use AI for writing boilerplate code for you where it's a lot simpler for it to deduce what you're trying to do, it's less prone to making mistakes, it has to use less creativity, and it's mostly just saving you time so you don't actually have to type things yourself. And in my experience using tools like this, like Visual Studio and Telecode, it can actually do a scarily good job of predicting what I want to write next based off of the previous things that I've written. And it means that instead of spending a couple minutes writing boilerplate setup code, it can generally just tell me what I want to write. I can hit tab, 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 auto completes everything I was going to do, make sure everything looks good, and I can get back to writing the more interesting parts of my code. Even on a more basic level, with things not really including any artificial intelligence, having function autocomplete that can just tell you which arguments you're supposed to be passing in and in which order can just help save you a little bit of time because you don't need to go look at that function and figure out what you're supposed to be passing into it. Obviously on their own, none of these things are really saving you that much time. It's a couple seconds here and there and it starts to compound over time. But I think the more important theme here is that it can really streamline the way that you write your code. You're not getting bogged down in syntax or writing a boilerplate. You can really just accelerate and write the code that's most important and most useful and rely on either the AI or any other tools you're using to take care of some of the more basic things that need to be there but don't really need your mental energy. One of the most important things you can do is taking the time up front to set up your environment so that you can work as efficiently as possible. Taking that hour of making sure everything is exactly the way you like it will save you many hours down the road. And this is really a blanket category. It can really include anything from on the computer, making sure you have language extensions set up, or a debugger, or static analysis, or even having the formatting style set up the way that you like it. And in your physical environment, it's making sure you can work ergonomically. Do you have a good chair, or maybe a standing desk? Do you have a monitor? Do you have a keyboard that works well for you, or a mouse? Anything that's gonna help you work better for longer is really what we're talking about here. Doing this kind of stuff up front enables you to just focus on writing really good code without all the distractions and the resistance and the headaches. And whether it's on your computer or in your physical environment, anything you find that's kind of a form of resistance and you notice is slowing you down and is causing you pain, dealing with that as soon as possible is going to make your life a lot better and just make you write code a lot faster. Building and testing frequently makes it easy to isolate bugs as soon as they appear, and this reduces your debugging time, as well as the risk of you incorrectly diagnosing the wrong issue. And this only gets better if you add in automated testing, because as you write new code, 
it's very easy to check to make sure you didn't regress any previous functionality that was working, and if so, you know exactly when you broke it. And especially as your project scales, this is gonna save you even more time because you don't need to waste a ton of time doing manual validation. Now, anyone who's ever tried to write a complex program before in one shot knows there's a pretty good chance you're gonna miss something, if not multiple things as you're writing it, which means potentially scanning through thousands of lines of code, trying to pinpoint a bug that isn't immediately obvious or potentially multiple bugs, which is just really not a good time. On the complete other extreme, if you write a unit test for every single significant method, either before or directly after implementing it, then you would always know really quickly after writing some functionality whether or not it was working properly. Realistically, you'll probably end up somewhere in the middle. You're probably not gonna try to write a huge complex program without at least doing some intermediary building and testing, and writing a unit test for every single method is probably gonna get to be a bit tedious and just most people aren't going to do that but making sure that you're building and testing throughout writing your program is going to make it a lot easier to pinpoint bugs and find out where they're occurring and what you're regressing as you're going. And that's gonna save you a lot of time for anything other than the simplest of programs. All right, if you guys found any of those tips helpful and you wanna see more videos like this from me, then make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one.